All right, everybody, welcome back. This week, we're gonna get that electrical system all sorted out, I hope. The replacement battery showed up, so let's open it and see what we got. All right, this is the replacement. It just had uh, the box and then just some packaging material around it. Didn't really have much to keep it in place, so I hope nothing was damaged. But I will check the voltage, and the most interesting thing for me is to see if uh, the BMS will start working. So we'll see if we can get that far. So this guy, the voltage is 59, and all the other batteries that are in the vehicle are like 56. So I'm either going to have to drain this one or charge the others. I decided to go with draining, so we'll leave this one for a while while we work on some other things. Okay, so what is next? Um, I need to mount my new uh, battery holder, put the battery modules in, and connect them. I also need to get uh, some cooling plates, uh, which I haven't even ordered yet. Got to get those, put those on, clamp everything down. Um, I think what I'll start with those, get the battery modules in, get the high voltage connected, and then uh, try out all the BMS uh, units. Because if I get two battery packs, BMS all working, oof, I'll feel like that's a good milestone. I have all my uh, BMS, all the modules there the master and the satellites for each battery pack. They're all secured in my uh, new box here. So it's ready to put in. I don't, so I could hook up one system, but again, I'm just missing one battery. That's, the thing is you're not really supposed to have the battery modules uh, connected without this one being on, you know? So anyway, you just, best practice is not to have the those connections in until everything's uh, up and running on the battery side. All right, so I made a new cable from there to there. So that's essentially from battery module four to five. I'm still waiting on battery module six. I looked at all the BMS outlets or uh, pinouts again, testing with all the batteries. So again, up, up through five and all pack one, we're all good there. So I think I'll uh, look at uh, kind of securing the BMS box to the car and getting all the plugs, making sure everything's kind of lined up and if we need to do any trimming or readjusting of the, any of the cables, we can do that. So I put the BMS units in there um, thinking that I was gonna essentially put that on here, but I'm thinking what I like is, so again, this is the other half or essentially what, what I thought was gonna be the top plate, but I think I want it to be the bottom plate. So I'll have all my BMS units here, and that way I can plug everything in, and this is just kind of a, a dust cover. It allows for a little easier access than that one. So I think I might switch all those. But anyways, th this is where it's gonna live and put the dust cover on. I've got that plate for the battery that, that'll hold that down, as well as I've got uh, some just some steel plates, uh, kind of make it a battery box, essentially cover all the openings. And that will be it for kind of the high voltage things. All right, here is the uh, BMS. It's gonna go on top of the other battery box. So that'll be kind of the top cover for that one. And then um, it's these high voltage lines that go to the switch. I think I'm gonna terminate them right here on the top of the box. So you just have the switch right on top. So again, just missing the one battery module. I'll get that one. So again, I need a, a cable from there to there, and then another cable from there to the switch. So I think I can get all those done though. And yeah, we'll see how far we get. All right, so the coolant that comes up here, I added a T and I can turn those on and off and also a flow adjuster here, and then just a loop. I don't have the cooling plate yet, or plates, I haven't decided which, but
but uh, I wanted to build all this in so when I get it I can just hook this to those plates kind of inlet outlet and then that goes back to another T on the outlet side so I think this is already on the coolant side all right it took a little longer than I thought but it is discharged to within a quarter volt um, so we'll go ahead and put it put it in the uh, tray here and start hooking up cables um, again we'll be careful and monitor temperatures and things like that but once it's all set I want to check the BMS wires so fingers crossed all right I've got the uh, high voltage lines connected so no sparks no bangs um, all the things seem to be thermally stable so it's not yet put into position I haven't put on the BMS connectors yet um, I think I want to test just make sure that uh, things work that we don't go in that weird boot cycle things like that so I'm gonna test that and then we'll put on the BMS wires all right so it's going through that uh, boot cycle again so I don't know what's going on um, I'll try and figure out all right so still trying to figure out the uh, boot cycle problem so what I'm thinking is that essentially when I had this plugged in or hooked up but that wire was not even attached to the uh, battery module so essentially when the whole second pack was not connected but that was there um, it had issues um, so something tells me it's just it's either this fuse or it's uh, just that line because whether the battery pack is hooked up or not seems to not matter so I'll check out some things with the fuse and with this uh, high voltage cable and see what we can come up with all right so I've tried a couple things um, so I tried instead of hooking it to this one hooking it to that one um, it still gives the boot cycle um, I tried uh, swapping out that cable so disconnected that one con connected another one and it still did it so what I am thinking is I'm thinking that somehow um, we've got a grounding problem so um, uh, right now I'm gonna do it with uh, all the batteries disconnected but just this one and see if it boots up and then I'll do just the first battery and then second third and see see if I can figure out what's going on all right so trying to figure out what's going on I just turned it on again this time it cycled all the way through so um, don't know all right I apologize in advance um, I'm going to cry one way or another so it'll either work or it won't so we'll go ahead and uh, power it up All right, I uh, powered down. Um, for whatever reason, it's not connecting the port, so I have to remember or find out what's going on. All right, so there was enough uh, time in between and whatever that uh, when I hooked it up again, it was at a, a different COM port. So it's ready now, so I'll go ahead and power up. Okay, so all the LTCs are detected. It's got temperatures, so let's go ahead and do... Hallelujah! So it's reading all the thermistors, reading all the cells. None of them even say discharge, so that's awesome. Hallelujah. Can't even believe it. What a relief. This is me crying. All right, I thought I'd show everybody. So this guy's just kind of got a green flash. So that means it's good. So this one we don't have plugged in yet, but uh, we can uh, do that one as well. But we've got balancing enabled. 
Uh, all the cells seem like they're reading uh, good. The thermistors are reading good. And that's on pack two. So pack one was previously working good. So we'll go ahead and confirm it's still working good. And uh, then we'll have these BMSs kind of all sorted out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and charge pack number two so it can get up to the voltage of pack one. And then I'll uh, hook both packs together. And that'll be the first time we're uh, got all the packs together. All right, we've got uh, things charging, but there's only so many hours in the day and we're gonna be short on content because watching things charge is not very interesting. So, wanted to kind of just point out a few things, uh, things that I wish I would have known or have learned along the way. So, I think like a lot of people that have tried this, um, the challenge with trying to make an electric car for something that was not designed to be electric is there's a lot of space problems, mainly just the batteries. You know, where do you put the batteries? Um, the battery cables, you know, so there's lots of comments I've had that says, hey, you should run it underneath. Well, this car just has a fiberglass panel underneath, so you can't really run it underneath. And I don't know why a fiberglass panel underneath is any safer than a fiberglass panel on the side. So tools and skills that uh, kind of picked up along the way um, for electric, you know, the cables. I uh, got a hydraulic crimper. I think that works great. Um, really don't know what you would do without that. Um, I borrowed a welder. So uh, again, welding for those of you who have not tried. Welding's not hard. Um, I'll, I'll say this, it's hard to get really good at it, but welding in itself is not hard. I think in a lot of places I've used uh, twice as many uh, wires as I need to. So one other thing is, so again, I had to do all my own wiring for things like blinkers and windshield wiper, headlights, things like that. So again, I knew that you had to have essentially two wires. You had to have a, like, for the switches, you have to have a wire that goes there and then essentially that's the switch. You have to have a wire that feeds the information back or the current back. Well, again, one of the things I wish I knew is you only really need one wire, one power, if you will, for like 20 switches. And you just need 20 wires coming back from those switches. So I ended up doing like 40 wires. So I had 20 there and 20 back. So that's one thing. And for all your uh, motors, you know, your your things that actually use the power. So that's for switches. For the things that use the power, again, I did the same thing. I said, well, you need to have a wire going there to distribute the power and you need a ground coming back, you know, to the battery or to the chassis. Well, again, if I had 20 things up there, you know, headlights and brights and motors and really um, you need essentially 20 powers, but you kind of only need one ground coming back. Now when I say that, you've got to have, you got to make sure that uh, everything's, all the wires and stuff are sized correctly. But again, that's another thing I did where I had essentially 40 wires going back and forth. So I didn't need all those. Um, the high voltage lines, there was somebody made a comment about, you know, all the monitoring wires. So that I should have uh, that be high voltage. So while it's true they are high voltage, they're like really low amperage, I meaning they've all got, the monitoring wires have these really light fuses. So um, I don't know, again, doing the skin, I don't know that I would have all those uh, being the orange cables because it makes it look like I got a really dangerous car with all these high voltage lines going around. Um, another thing I would say is it's been surprisingly easy. So I have not really worked on cars um, that much, but just I knew this was a passion of mine and I knew I wouldn't mind coming out in the garage and working on a project. And so um, for anybody that's thinking that they might like to do that, I would say go for it. I probably made things look uh, way harder than they are just because I'm not very good. But again, in about a year, I've kind of went from nothing to a car. And again, if any of you've watched uh, many of the episodes, um, 
I really don't have a build manual. There's not been very many instructions at all that go with how to put this car together. And again, where I'm doing something different, this was made for an internal combustion engine. I'm figuring out how to power everything electrically. So really not that hard. So I think one of the things I wanna do after this project is I wanna do another car, again, an another electric drive car, um, but this time I wanna design it from scratch because one of the things that gives me grief all the time is, again, nothing was designed for, for the electric drive. And so I've had to put batteries in odd places, run cables in places that aren't really desirable. And what I'd love to do is design from scratch um, so it's all kind of made for that. And if that goes well, maybe I'd offer it as a kit for anybody who wanted to buy it and build it themselves. All right, I got the, this plate on. These are really just uh, so it can still be charging while I'm working here. But uh, this cover will go on the top there. So I've got all my BMS wires plugged in. So again, this will go on the top. I got the switch there, so just go up and I've got four screw points and then I'll have the switch on top and that will be done. It's still charging. It should be done soon, but um, daylight is fading and I'm afraid we spent too much time discharging and charging batteries, but uh, hey, that's what we're doing. We're building. I tested out the uh, onboard charger um, basically just let it run to see if it would shut itself off so again when it reaches um, the the state of charge it actually shuts itself off so uh, it was one of, those, one of the things I was looking to see if I needed to add um, some feedback loop to tell it to shut off but it works as intended so that's good all right to sum up we were able to get the uh, last battery module, which is a huge milestone. Um, got that one discharged and to the point where we could hook it up with all the other batteries in pack two. Um, did get some uh, boot cycle problems, so I don't know that we've seen the last of that, although it does seem to be working now. Um, we were able to get the BMS working, which again, a huge milestone. So lots of good things happening, um, but we are running out of time. So that'll do it for now. All right, that's all the time we have for this week. See you next week.